afternoon. My name is Roberta Jones, and I'm a lay minister at Mosaic Midtown, Detroit. First, I would like to give reverence to the Holy Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for placing this message in my spirit and um, entrusting me to deliver a word. I would like to thank Pastor Santis and Pastor Michael for inviting me on this afternoon to share. And I would like to thank each and every one of you that are participating in the recovery program for sacrificing your time this afternoon to listen to what I have to say. I'm gonna talk about some things that we do, we've done, and might be still doing, and that's hide. We've all found ourselves hiding from someone or something one time or another in our lives. Now, those who know me know that cold weather and I do not see eye to eye. I know hate is not the good word, but I hate the winter time. This is a time of year where I literally hibernate like the bears. <laughs> I do, seriously. I don't come out for nothing. I make sure my house is full of food and all the things I need, all the essentials. So the only reason I'm going out is to go to church or to go to the post office and pick up some mail. And it's ironic that I was born in November in one of the coldest months of the year. I detest winter so much that it has implanted a memory in my mind. And that's when I was a young girl, my mother and I would catch the bus, going to church, and it would be so cold in the winter. I remember she used to take her coat and wrap it around me, and I would snuggle up under it as close as I could so I would feel warm and I was secured. I also recall being a young girl, playing a lot of different games, me and my neighborhood friends. And I was pretty good at them. Believe it or not, I was really one of the fastest runners in my neighborhood. But anyway, the game that we used to play a lot of was hide and seek. We often played this game, and I was good at this one too. So this game, I'm sure some of you remember this, consists of a group of children, and there's one person that will look for everybody, and that person was called It. So It would get up on the pole and hide their eyes and count to 20. And when they got the 20, they would say, ready or not, here I come. And then it would go scamping around and looking for everybody, trying to find who they could find. So they could tag them and make them it. So if it spotted someone and tagged that person before that person was able to get back to the home base, then that person would become it. And then the game will start all over again. Now, we can't hide from God. There's no place to hide from him. Can you imagine playing this game, hide and go see with God? The one who sits high and looks low, where you gonna hide? Only thing I could think of in my mind is to come up with it. It's God, this is not fair. You're cheating. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's no hiding place from him. Jeremiah 16, 17 says, For my eyes are on all their ways. They are not hidden from me. My face, nor is there iniquity concealed from my eyes. Wow. Now that's pretty heavy, right? Now, by the raising of your hand, 
how many of you can agree with me when I say we all are guilty of doing things we know we shouldn't do? No matter where we do it at or how we do it, we know we're going to get caught. We get busted. And that's what's happening most of the time. We get caught. Unexpected. Things always come out in the light when you don't expect them to. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about things being done in darkness and revealed in the light. And similarly, there's another scripture in 1 John 1 and 6 that says, if we claim that we have fellowship with him, but keep living in darkness, we're liars. We're lying and not practicing the truth. In other words, you can't hide no matter how hard we try. The message I would like to share with you this afternoon, I guess you can tell, is <laughs> you can't hide. <laughs> and the scripture I would like to use to bring this message out is Hebrews 4, 12 through 13. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of souls and spirit and of joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto his eyes, him with which we have to do. Let's pray. Father God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I come before you, Lord God, first thanking you for this day that you've made and allowing us to see another day. Father, thank you for the words that you have given, and I thank you for those that are listening with attentive ear and an open heart, mind, and spirit. I ask you to bless the ears of the listeners, Father God, and let the words fall on good ground that they can take root and manifest and transform in the lives of your children. These blessings I ask for right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Now I have a few questions that I would like to ask you. Think about this. If God is omniscient, knowing everything, how are you going to hide from him? If he's omnipresent, if he's existing everywhere at all times, how is it possible for us to hide from the presence of God? Simply, it isn't. We can't. There is no hiding place. In your quiet time, I would like to encourage you to read Psalms 139, 1 through 13. But due to time constraint, I'm only going to read verses 7 through 13. And they read as follows. Please follow along with me in your Bibles. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend unto heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the night, the light 
and both are alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. This scripture is telling us that we are in God's eyesight at all times. And ever since we were conceived in our mother's womb, even before we came to planet Earth, God has always been covering us and watching us, observing all of our doings. This verse also reiterates iterate that there is nowhere, nowhere at all that we can hide from God. We've been marked, although sometimes we stray away from the plans that God have laid out for us. We have been marked and eventually we'll have to come to the light and do as he had planned. As a young adult, I was really on fire for the Lord. I had recommitted myself to Christ and was eager to share his word and what he had done in my life with others. And it really didn't matter where I was or what I was doing. If I was roller skating with my children or if I was playing cards with my friends or shooting um, pool with my biker buddies. Yeah, but some of y'all didn't know I used to motorcycle rack, but anyway, or if I was dancing in a nightclub with family and friends, it really didn't matter. Jesus was the focal point and he was the center of the majority of my conversations. On one specific event that I was hanging out, this really stuck with me, it's because I was having a good time and wouldn't you know, Jesus came up in the conversation. I was excited to share. And I had, um, I guess, said something to the wrong person. Because this individual says, you're in the wrong place to be preaching. I don't want to hear anything about Jesus. And you're blowing my high. <laughs> I really was still hanging because I was hoping to be used by the Holy Spirit where I could convince my friends and associates to turn their lives around. But however, this particular evening, with that being said, I actually stopped hanging out anymore. And I still maintain some of those friendships, but things had changed because they knew I had changed. God was transforming me. My message to you is this. It doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing. You can't hide. If Christ is in you and you are in Christ, he's going to locate you. He's going to show up at an unexpected time and he's going to expose you. There's no way around it. Believe me, if he hasn't done it yet, he will. During this time in my life, I was eating a lot of Jesus. I was absorbing as much as I possibly could. I was fasting and praying. I was doing church work. I was um, a teacher in academic excellence class for the ministry to help young people after a service. I was just wrapped up in God and God was wrapped up in me. But because of the love of God and the love he had for me, he uncovered me at various places and locations in numerous ways. Yet I tried to hide, but couldn't. Eventually, I had to surrender. I began to do things Jesus' way, the right way. God has no respect of person. And I promise you, again, if he hasn't exposed you, he will. Remember, God knows your very heart. 
He knows your motive and your intention. He knows why you do what you do. Remember, he's a discerner of every thought you have. And he wants to free you from the bondage of sin. Here's another story I would like to share with you. And this one is really dear to my heart because of who it's about and who it concerns. In 2011, I was going through my neighborhood driving. Oh, yeah, but let me, let me take it back a little bit further. During that time period in my life, I was actually going through a bad divorce. And I was married to a man of God for about 15 years and 11 months. And at this time, I was really angry with God for allowing me to suffer the abuse that I went through. I became so angry that I stopped praying. I stopped going to church. I dropped out of circulation. I wouldn't talk to church people. I stopped doing anything that concerned God. I stopped ministering in song and taking engagement at different churches. The only thing I was really doing was taking care of homeless and abused young people and going to various food pantries, getting food and delivering it to different homes in the neighborhood. Anyway, one day as I was driving, I was going down seven miles near Wyoming and I passed this building and it had a whole lot of people out there. I mean, seemed like hundreds. And nosy me made a U-turn to find out what was going on in my community. So I um, asked, I inquired, and they said it was a food pantry, that a food distribution was happening right then and there. So I parked my car, of course, and I went in to the Wesley Community Center, where I was introduced with, to Pastor Mark Jenkins, who was the overseer of the building. He was the coordinator for the food distribution. And he was also the man whom God had led me to, to bring me back into right relationship with him. This is relatively a long story, so I'm going to conduce it, make it short. Pastor Mark, an alpha Caucasian male, this too is another story that we can discuss at a later date. Anyway, he showed me so much love. Pastor Mark helped me in so many ways. He was the hands and feet of Jesus. He was so involved in ministry in my community that I had to get to know more about him. So what I did was start going to the food distribution and communicating with him, finding out things that he was doing in the community. And I eventually start going to the Bible studies that he was hosting at the community center. Eventually after that, he told me that he was getting ready to start having services at the building. And I followed him even up until this day to the place that we now call Mosaic Midtown Detroit Church. God used Pastor Mark as a radar tracking detector to home in on me, to let me know that he knew where I was. He knew the pain I was in. He knew what I needed. And between me and you, he knew who to send to come get me. Yes, he was pulling me out of my hiding place. 
God wants us to be transparent. And he wants to transform every area in our lives. And I had to stop running and hiding from myself because I wasn't hiding from God. He knew exactly where I was. He does not want us to be hypocrites. And because of his love, his grace, and his tender mercies, God has provided a wonderful way of salvation through Christ Jesus for each and every one of us. Acts 4 and 12 says, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men which we must be saved. In order to obtain salvation, we must first recognize that we're in a fallen state, we're in a fallen condition. And in our current state of sin, we're like a foul smell in God's nostrils. And we're like filthy rags in his eyesight. Remember God is holy and he cannot be in the presence of sin. And because of our sinful fallen condition, our sinful state, a price had to be paid for our redemption. Jesus covered that price to purchase our salvation by the shedding of his blood. Jesus is the only one that can save us, cleanse us, and restore us into a right relationship with the Father and give us everlasting life. So my question to you is, are you ready to stop trying to hide from God, deceiving yourself like I did? Isn't it time for you to start living in the light? Are you ready to surrender and give your life to God? Don't procrastinate any longer. The time is right and the time is now. The scripture tells us that Jesus is the only way we can get to God. We cannot have access through him or to him by any other means. In 1 John 14, 6, Jesus made it quite clear when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts 16, 31 also lets us know that if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. Ephesians 2 and 8 informs us by grace we are saved through faith. And his salvation is a gift. All we have to do is receive it. Will you accept this gift today? Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for the marvelous things that you have done. Thank you, Father, for the love that you have revealed to us today and for the love that we share together as your body. Now we pray, Father God, that the words that have been spoken will fall on good ground and be sown into good ground this day, Father God. Watch over these words, Father, and these seeds and protect them. May they take root and produce wonderful things, Lord, things of beauty and great blessing. 
Father God, as we leave this place and space and time, thank you in advance. Father, for all that you've done, walk with us, Father God, not allowing us to hide any longer, but allowing us to surrender and accept the precious gift of salvation. Father, I pray your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and that your grace, mercy, protection, and your love and kindness surround us each and every day. This I pray in the name of the mighty Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.